I can tell what every single one of you value by what you do. I can tell what you value by what you do. So think about this for a moment. Have you ever known someone or been around someone who claims to be a Christian? They say, oh, I follow Jesus, I'm a Christian, but when you look at what they do, the way that they act at school, the things that they post on social media, the way that they treat others, the stuff that comes out of their mouth, it's like it doesn't match up with what they say. I can tell what you value by what you do. Maybe you've known someone who they talk all the time about how important it is to be healthy, to be fit, to be active. But then when you look at what they do, the things that they eat, the amount of time that they spend on the couch or in bed, it's like what they say and what they do doesn't match up. I can tell what you value by what you do. Maybe you're someone who says you really value education. It's, it's important. You want to get good grades. You want to get into college. You say you want to succeed. But then when I look at what you do, procrastinating on all your assignments, not spending time studying, not paying attention in class, it's like what you say you value doesn't match up with what you do. And so we've been going through this series called Do Something. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that phrase, it pops into my mind like these moments of desperation where maybe you have something happening to someone and they need help and they're looking out and they're just crying out like, will someone please do something? And I can tell what you value by what you do in these moments too. Maybe you've uh, been in the halls at your school and you've seen someone get into a fight. What do you do? Someone's saying, do something, someone do something. What do you do in those moments? Are you the kind of person who, who steps in to help, to separate, to protect? Or are you one of the people that starts doing this? Uh, or what about some of these other like dire moments where I hear people saying, will, will anyone do something? Things like racism, poverty, homelessness, people without access to clean water. How are we responding in those situations? See, I can tell what you actually value by what you do. And so my question for us tonight is this. When it comes to the message of Jesus this life-changing good news that we carry. If someone were to look at what we are doing, or even more specifically, what we are failing to do, what would they say we actually value? Jesus tells a story where he talks exactly about this. And it's in Matthew chapter 25. I want to read this with you. And up until this point, Jesus has been talking about the kingdom of God, and he's been telling these different stories to try to explain what it's like to be part of this kingdom. And so he tells another story that starts in verse 14. And here's how it begins. Jesus says, again, it, this kingdom, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his own wealth to them. And so to one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags. To another, one bag, each according to his ability, then went on his journey. Now let's stop there for a moment. There's a few things I see right off when I look at this. We have this master who's getting ready to go on a journey, and it says that the master calls some servants, but it specifically says, calls his, his own servants. These are people who claimed to belong to the master, right? Pe people who claimed to know the master. He, he called them his own. So right away, we know exactly who Jesus is talking to, what Jesus is talking about. It, it's us, the people who claim 
to belong to the master, the people who claim to follow him, the people who say, yes, he would call us his own. And it says that the master gave them and trusted his wealth to them. And so there's different bags of gold given. Maybe if you're really familiar with the story or you've read it before, you've heard this called the parable of the talents. That's how it's translated in some places. And it's not like talents, like things you're good at. That was the name of a kind of money in Jesus' time. And what people say is that one talent was equal to about the amount of money a person would make in their entire life. All the money you would make in your whole life put together equaled about one talent. And so he gives one five. That's an absurd amount of money. And the next one, two. That's a ton of money. Even one is an insane amount of money. He entrusts them with this. And it says, and the master went away onto a journey. Entrusted them with something incredibly valuable gave them a responsibility, and then left. So what do you think they did? Let's see. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once, put his money to work, gained five bags more. Also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now, look at this for a minute. When you look at the first two servants, what are some words used to describe what they did? First, they went at once, right away, immediately. They didn't take any time to wait. Right away, they went off. They put it to work. They gained more. All of these are action words. They did something right away, put it to work, gained more. They did something. But notice the contrast with this third servant. Instead of going away at once, he went off. It literally means ran away. Instead of putting it to work, he dug a hole. Instead of gaining more, he hid the money. The first two did something, but this third one did nothing. So what happens? Verse 19 says, After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, You entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. And his master replied, Well done, good, faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And then to the second uh, servant, Jesus says, The man with Two bags of gold came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. And his master replied, well done. Good, faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many. Come and share in your master's happiness. So, Eventually, the master comes back, and I find this interesting because it says that he was gone for a long time. But notice what these first two servants did not do. Did they sit around saying, oh, man, he's going to be gone for a long time. We don't know when he's coming back. We got plenty of time. We don't have to get to work right away. Like, we'll do that later. We'll do that when we're older. We'll do that at the end of their life. No. It says they went to work at once. Immediately. Immediately. And then, when the master comes back, how does the master respond? He praises them. Well done. You've been good. You've been faithful. Let me reward you. Come, enjoy my happiness. Experience life with me. And what I find so fascinating about this, too, is what the master doesn't say. 
to the one with two bags of gold that comes and says, Master, I took the two bags. I made two more. He doesn't say, two? Are you joking? The dude over here got five bags. You've been slacking, right? Come, coming to me with two bags of gold, like, that's nothing. Why couldn't you be more like him? Huh, you're, you're lower on my list. You're not a, no. He says, word for word, the same exact thing to both. Because it's not a competition, right? It's the fact that they both did something with this valuable thing they had been given. And the master praises them, rewards them. Well done. Come share in my happiness. But what about for the third servant? Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you're a hard man. He basically is saying, you're a jerk. You harvest where you haven't sown, you gather where you haven't scattered seeds. So I was afraid. And I went out, hid your gold in the ground. See here, take what belongs to you. And I don't know about you, but I read that and I'm a little confused. Because I don't know what master there he's talking about. What did we just see him say to the other two, right? Well done, good, faithful, let me reward you. Come share in my happiness. Where, where is he getting this view from? Why would he be so afraid? And what I see here is what this servant does, or maybe even better said, what this servant fails to do reveals how he views the master. Reveals what he thinks about the master. See, I can tell what you value by what you do. I can tell how you view God by what you do. And I can tell how you view God by what you fail to do. So if you look at your life, the things you're doing, the things you're failing to do, what does it reveal about what you really think about God? So how does the master respond to the servant? His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you think that I'm a person who harvests where I haven't sown, I gather where I haven't scattered seed. Well, if you really thought that about me, you should have at least put my money on deposit with the bankers. Then when I returned, at least I would have received it back with interest. So then, take the bag of gold from him. Give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they'll have an abundance. But Whoever doesn't have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Guys, the master calls this servant lazy. A lazy servant. And what's the problem? The problem is that he did Nothing. He had been entrusted with something extremely valuable, given a responsibility, yet he did nothing. And the master says, look, even if you did the bare minimum, the bare minimum, it would have returned something. At least you would have done something, but you didn't even do that. You claim you claim to be my own. You claim to follow me, yet you did nothing. And the master has some very harsh words for that servant. The one who claims to belong to him, yet did nothing. So what's this story trying to tell us? See, just like these servants were given something very valuable, from the master, we, we claim to carry this valuable, 
life-changing good news of Jesus. What Jesus has done is earth-shattering, the most important, most valuable thing. And the question is, what are we doing with that message? What are we doing with that good news? Because I can tell what you value by what you do. And if we aren't doing anything with the gospel, then friends, that tells me that we don't really value it. You can say it all you want, but if what you do is not matching what you say, then I can tell what you really value by what you do, or maybe by what you're not doing. So what does it look like? to be these first two servants that that took what they had been given, put it to work, and gained more. It makes me think of a student that I once had. Her name's Karen. And Karen decided she wanted to do something with the gospel, with the message of Jesus that she had received. And so she decided to start talking to one of her friends at school about Jesus. And then she invited that friend to start coming around church. And eventually that friend decided to accept Jesus and get baptized. And so after that, then her friend went and invited her own parents, the rest of her family, to church. Started talking to them about Jesus. Their family got baptized. Then their family started going out and telling people about Jesus. And you could see this ripple effect. That's what it looks like when the gospel is put to work and it begins to gain more. Or even just the other day, I was in uh, the main auditorium on a Sunday morning and this lady came up to me and wanted to introduce herself. And she said, hey, I just want you to know that back in December, I heard you preach a sermon in the main service. And when I heard that, I decided right afterward that I wanted, I wanted to get baptized. I wanted to give my life to Jesus. And, and I was so thankful that she shared that story with me because what it, what it tells me is that when we do something with the gospel, when we do something with this life-changing news that we carry about Jesus, it makes a difference. It makes an impact things start to happen. And I know sometimes it can get discouraging. Maybe uh, you've heard stories at a summer camp or seen videos or heard someone talk in a sermon about like these big crazy things people do where, yeah, I started this Bible study at my school and now 500 kids are coming to it all hearing about Jesus. And you're like, well, I'm just talking to one friend about Jesus right now, like I guess. I'm a failure. No. The master doesn't compare. The master doesn't elevate one above the other. The fact that both of the first two servants did something is what mattered. They're both praised the same. But what does it look like for us to be more like this third servant? It makes me think uh, about sitting in a recliner chair. It's like they're comfy, you sit back, put your feet up, what even one of the really popular brands is called, Lazy Boy. Like it's all about being lazy, not doing anything. And sometimes I feel like we treat the gospel like that. It's like we have had our lives changed by Jesus. We carry this good news, and we just choose to do nothing with it. Absolutely nothing with it. And again, what this third servant does with the money he's been given reveals how he views the master, reveals the way that he thinks about the master, and what we do or don't do with the gospel, I think, reveals a lot about how we view God about the view we have of God. See, this third servant obviously did not know the master, didn't truly know what the master was like, and so he did nothing out of laziness and did nothing out of fear. 
and I wonder how many of us are doing nothing with the gospel out of laziness and out of fear. How many of us could that be said for? And it shows that we don't truly know God. We haven't truly experienced God and been changed by the message of Jesus. Because if we had been, we would have to do something. See, these first two servants, they knew what the master was like. They cherished that. They valued what they had been given. And so they got to work at once. And if you truly know Jesus, if you've truly received the good news, if your life has truly been impacted by it, you have to do something. How could you not? How could you not want other people to experience that same thing? If your life has been changed by Jesus, how could you possibly keep that to yourself? Because, see, I can tell what you value by what you do. And if I'm honest, when I look at what most of us are doing or failing to do with the gospel, it looks like we don't really value it. Because most of us are taking this life-changing news of Jesus and we are digging a hole and burying it. That's what I see most of us doing. And the only reason I can come up with for why we do this is because we haven't truly been changed by the good news of Jesus. And if that's you tonight, if you're saying, I haven't, like I I, I don't really know the master, I I haven't truly been changed by Jesus, received this life-changing news, let's change that tonight. I would love for you to come talk to me or any one of our adult leaders here about what it looks like to do that, to choose to follow Jesus, to truly start to know Jesus and be changed by Jesus. But if you say that you belong to the master, then you must do something with that good news. Because Jesus has some strong words in this parable for people who claim to follow him yet do nothing. So when you think through the things we've talked about this series, what it looks like for us to do something with our resources, what it looks like for us to do something with our time, what it looks like for us to do something with our gifts, and what it looks like for us to do something with the gospel, how, how could you use all of those things you've been given to let people know about Jesus, to share this gospel message? Because If we truly value the message of Jesus, if we're really going to say it's the most important thing, then what we do has to match up with that. We must do something. So we said earlier that this is the last regular oasis of this school year. Next week is fancy night, and then we'll be on break for the summer. But I want you to carry on this challenge, even as we go on break, to do something. And so uh, we came up with this idea. I know you won't be able to see it super well on my phone, but I've got a slide too. We made this uh, graphic that you could simply set as the lock screen on your phone that just says, do something. And we posted that on uh, our Instagram story, so you could screenshot it. Or if you don't have Instagram, you can find me or Danny or Jenny afterward. We've got it on our phone. We can text it to you or airdrop it to you. But I've had this on my phone for a week now. And uh, I look at my phone a lot during the day. And every time I go to open it, I see that reminder. Do something. What? am I doing today? What am I doing this week? What am I doing this summer with the resources I have, with the time that I have, with the gifts I've been given? What am I doing with the gospel message that I carry? So that's my challenge for you tonight. If you want to commit to do something, get that off our Instagram or after service is over, come get it from one of us. Set it somewhere on your phone where you'll see it throughout the day 
as a constant reminder that if we say we value this life-changing news of Jesus, then we have to do something. So the band's going to come back up on stage. We're going to continue in a time of worship. During that time, I, I'd maybe encourage you to spend some time in prayer reflecting what, what can you be doing with this good news of Jesus. So I want you guys to stand, and then let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for who you are and that you truly are a good master, that you invite us to experience life, that you invite us to share in your happiness. And Lord, we, we want to do something with that message. We don't want to be people that, that take this world-changing news of what you've done and, and bury it. We want to spread it to see the impact that it makes, to put it to work, to see more and more people come to know Jesus. So would we be challenged simply to do something? It's in your name we pray. Amen.